The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoice. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And all God's children said loudly, Amen. from Jeremiah chapter 31. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Welcome to today's children's message. Today, we hear about Jesus healing somebody's sight. And there's more to this story. 
this person was somebody that was yelling through a crowd to Jesus, knowing that Jesus could help them. There's something that happens here, though. So there's actually a lot of people in the crowd that are also following Jesus that are telling this person to stop. Stop yelling. Go away. We don't have time for this. But this person continuously knows that Jesus is there. Jesus answers. Jesus shows us that he is there for everyone, even, though, even the people that we sometimes think should just go away or be quiet. And Jesus heals their sight, and they can see again. Now, that makes me think about some of these things that I have here. I have a pair of glasses, because without those or my contacts I have in my eyes, I can't see very well. And I have another pair of glasses like this one. And I also have some other things here. It's this bracelet that sits on my desk and it says beloved. Or this cross that also sits on my desk and I can hold it in my hand. And I have this one that stays at my house with me too and I can do the same thing. It fits right in my hand. And I think all of these things for me are a lens, a way that Jesus helps me see the world. What I mean by that is the glasses literally help me see, but knowing who Jesus is and listening to how Jesus loves others is also like glasses that helps us see the world, helps remind us that we can say, Jesus is for you too, not just for me, but for everybody. And that's what the cross and things like that remind us of too, who Jesus is and how Jesus helps us see the world with love, grace, and peace. So let's look through the lenses of Jesus this week. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus and Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the way. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many, many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, we have in Mark one of the only people who were healed, one of the few people who were healed who are named, Bartimaeus. And then not only is he named, but his father, Timaeus, is named. So that means one of two things. Either they are both part of Mark's community, or he was known. That this wasn't just a blind beggar. This was someone who once had respect or power or position. And now he lost his sight and everything he had was gone. Or it could become he became a very respectful member of the community of the way, which is what the early church was called. You might have noticed in the reading that I didn't read roadside, I read on the way. Because that's actually how it's written pointing to the name of the church, the way. They are on the way of discipleship of Jesus. They are on the way of ministry and mission. They are on the way of bringing the good news to the world. They are the way. We are the way. So Bartimaeus shouts out, Jesus, son of David. This is the only time anybody calls Jesus the son of David in the book of Mark. 
So he has some knowledge, scriptural knowledge, knowing that it's going to be the son of David, it's going to be the messianic line in that line that's going to come and save Israel and save the world. So there's some knowledge in this. This isn't someone who spent their life in need. This is someone who has fallen into need. What happens when he shouts out? The crowd does what most of us do. Not wanting to embarrass our community, we, we hide the brokenness. So the people of Jericho go, Shh, be quiet. Don't disturb the teacher. Leave him alone. We might do the same thing with people who we think aren't quite right. They don't give a good view of our community. In a park on Washington Avenue, there's a group of people who have set up tents to live. They've recently been removed because it doesn't look nice. And they're going to move them over to Derry Road, round where I live, in the middle of a warehouse district, where there's really no places for them to get supplies, no way for them to get the things they need. But we don't see them. They're setting up a beautiful setting. I'm not complaining about that. It's a beautiful, it looks beautiful what they're setting up for people to stay. But it's hidden away. We like to hide that, which I guess we are ashamed of. We're not unlike the crowd that day. But he shouts out even louder, Son of David, save me! And Jesus says, tell him to come here. I want to see your brokenness of your community. I want to see one who you were trying to hide, one who you were ashamed of. Bring him to me. And then this man who has nothing throws off his cloak, the one item he has, the thing that keeps him warm, the thing that covers him from the sun, he throws it off, leaving it on the ground, possibly to be taken, and runs to Jesus. I find that interesting. Unlike the rich man who wouldn't leave any of his stuff and walks away from Jesus, this man leaves basically the one possession he has and runs to Jesus. Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? He knows. But he wants Bartimaeus to claim it. I want my sight back. I want my life back. Because in this culture, a person who is blind is seen as unneeded. As one who is blind probably because he did something wrong. And so he's hidden. I kind of have that feeling when I see someone who is living on the street. They must have done something wrong. It must all be their fault. At least I am not responsible for them. And so I hide them out of sight. He says to him, I want my sight back. I want my humanity back because in this culture, I am no longer human. And Jesus says, your faith has made you well. You see. And then he doesn't leave. He follows Jesus on the way. He becomes a disciple. He becomes a member of the way who's named and known. He becomes a disciple who follows Jesus for the rest of his life. The peace that comes, the peace that comes when the body of Christ gathered is, is not achieved by shutting out the shouts of the world's pain. When I was in Guyana, the the poor churches didn't have 
windows. They were just open so the breeze would throw, blow through. And I asked the pastor, why don't they put up windows? And she said, well, it helps keep the church cool, but they can also hear the cries of the community. They can hear the cries of the community. When the body of Christ gathers, it's not achieved by shutting out the sounds of the world, of the world's pain, but through the hope that whatever, wherever those shouts ring forth, God is already present, listening, ready to care, to give, to heal. God is listening, preparing to send us out to be God's ears, eyes, mouth, and hands. As you listen to your own life, what do you hear? How is God calling you? How is God calling us to respond to the cries? Do I even hear the cries? Or do I turn a blind eye? I find that we have a tendency to hide that which we think is ugly, even if they're children of God. We seem to deny, I seem to deny their humanity, shutting them away so I don't have to see my failures, society's failures. I don't have to look upon the forgotten, the unnamed, the broken. But in this story, we find that they are named by God. They are not forgotten by God. They are healed by God. And the way God does that is with the people of the way with our eyes, with our ears, with our mouth, with our hands. We're called to bring that which is hidden to sight, to bring healing to that which is broken, to bring hope to the hopeless, to bring peace to that which is shattered and broken, to bring life where there's death. I'm proud of our community who is sheltering these people and offering them services that they need. I might be a little prouder if we didn't have to hide it. I'm like the crowd. Shh, shh, don't disturb the master. But what I'm really saying is don't disturb me. Don't show the world how I treat you. I confess that I have not been the ears, the eyes, and the mouth, and the hands of God. I confess that there have been times where I have shut out the cries And I pray that God forgives me and empowers me to hear the cries, to respond to the cries, to live as Jesus did. Jesus, Son of David, save me. Amen. Thy 
salvation Enter every trembling heart Breathe, oh breathe Thy loving spirit Into every troubled breast Let us all in Thee inherit Let us find Thy promised rest Take away the love of sinning Alpha and Omega be End of faith as its beginning Set our hearts at liberty Come from thy Hi there and welcome. It's really good to have you with us today, even virtually. It's wonderful to think of you all out there with us uh, at St. Luke's. We have just a couple of announcements for you today. Um, first one is uh, this Sunday, October 24th, is what we call Commitment Sunday. It's the time when our pledges kind of come to an end, where we'd like to get all of our, all of our pledge cards in, all of our online pledges in, um, so that we can get our budget ready and, and going for the next year. So um, just a reminder, if you haven't done it yet, if you could just fill out that pledge card, either in person, if you, if you stop by here, you can put it in our offering plate, you can hand it in in the office, you could mail it in, or it's also super easy to just go to the website and fill in a form and you can just submit right there. So just a reminder to get that done if you haven't. Thank you so much for that. All right, also we do have a new member class coming up. Uh, it will be November 7th in person. Um, if you are interested in that, just go ahead and go on the website and fill out the form for more information and we'll get you on the schedule. Uh, basically give you some information, um, give, let you know what the resources are here, kind of uh, get to know you a little bit better is basically what we want to do. So um, go ahead and sign up for that if you'd like to come in person. If you are uncomfortable coming in person and you would like to do something more sort of an online virtual thing, okay, go ahead and, and fill out that information and we can get back to you with some different ways we can get together with you um, online as well. So we look forward to doing that, looking forward to seeing you, and um, thank you so much, and it's wonderful to be with you. Set free from sin and death, and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages, and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms, and equip them with your gifts. Creating one. For the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that waterfowl, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins, and all living things flourish as you intend. Suffering One, for all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. Merciful One, for all who do the work of healing in mind and body and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness, that all may be healed. Sustaining One, for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. 
strengthen and encourage greeters, ushers, office volunteers, bakers, counters, committee and group leaders, teachers, students, singers, nurturers, and all who serve with generous hearts. Today we lift before you especially Kelsey and Patrick Cushman, Cameron and Rowan, Deb and John Daggetts, and Maddie and Isabel, Sharon and Kendall Dahman, Bo and Milan, Eric and Lori Dalrymple, Jordan and Tucker, James and Marilyn Dalton, Betty Dauk, Greg and Linda Dauk. Risen One, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of the saints, continue to inspire us with hope until we are all gathered at your eternal feast. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers in your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and our life. Amen. Let us join in prayer as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless and keep you, May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.